Let's go back in the spray booth. So a lot of what goes with painting is a lot of time management. You want to, you know, I already had my chip, had my color. Uh, I already strained my color. Straining your color is very important, by the way. You get a lot of, you know, chunkier pigments in there, and straining is like a must for base coat for sure. Um, but as far as like time management goes, you saw like I put adhesion promoter on real quick to get that on that bumper immediately. I wiped, plugged the holes, got my sealer on. While my sealer, sealer was flashing, I went and made my base, I strained it. So I've already got my color. Otherwise, I would have started spraying my color out immediately, probably when I sealed it. That way I'm two coats ahead of what I'm gonna put on the actual car. And you know, I could have full coverage before I get my color right. And that way all I have to do is, you know, like a medium wet coat, drop coat, and I'm done. No problem. But time management is very key in painting and anything you do in a body shop, honestly. So we'll start laying some color down. Nice wet coat on the bumper. Now we're gonna start this. And I don't start my blend immediately. I'm just trying to get coverage over my sealer. I'll do my blend later. So there's the first coat. Now we'll go out and flash it. Okay, so put the first coat of base on. First thing I'm gonna do is check, see if I have any nibs. You know, there's probably, there's a few little spots I'm gonna have to address. Um, the more you, I mean, the more you nib in your base coat, the less dirtier your job's gonna be when it comes out. So always check for nibs. I mean, you gotta, It'll come with time when you can see what you can actually like, you know, what you know you're gonna get away with when you clear, what's gonna go away and stuff like that. But try to be as proficient as possible when it comes to nibs. That way, the cleaner the job you have, the cleaner the outcome. And as far as like, you know, you know, blending that sealer into the door was concerned, um, a lot of the manufacturers are making, you know, really vivid colors now. And uh, they're using, they're putting less material on the cars. So like the only way for us to match those, you know, is by we have to make sure we put the same layer down that we're putting on the, the panels we're spraying. Cause if you don't, you know, you could have a, 
you could have your color not even match the own panel you're spraying. You got to put the same, the same undertone as what you're going to be putting on the car to be able to match that OEM, you know, look. And a lot of the colors they're making now, they're, you know, they're, they don't seem like they are, but they're very transparent, very thin film build. They don't have a lot of uh, actual material on the car, you know. You can mill read a lot of these and they're coming like, you know, four mills from the factory, like six. You know, four is, you can obviously tell it's pretty thin, you know. Obviously, you don't want to get crazy with your mill thickness and get all super thick on everything, but, you know, you just want to make sure you're being smart, you know. And obviously, you can see like where I have color over there, you can see my sealer still. That's one. I apply my color very wet and you can see right through it right now. So we're gonna work on getting that to hide, you know, a little bit of an illusion. So we're gonna put another coat on and then flash it and then, you know, see where I'm at. Thought the fender looked pretty good. I didn't see any nibs. The main thing is you want to try to stay consistent when you're spraying, you know, keep a nice pattern, overlaps nice and tight. Um, everybody sprays different, man. I've, I've worked with a lot of people and they all spray different. Everybody I talk to, all my friends, everybody's got their own way to spray. Um, I mean, well, whatever works for you, then that's how you should do it. If you're having problems and you need to adjust. And that's where, you know, your rep comes in or a fellow painter can help you out. But the main thing is it's keeping a nice, even motion. And, you know, first couple coats, I like to apply my base coat wet, you know, but I make sure I also dehydrate it very well. And every paint line is different to their specifications of how they want you to apply their base coat. Um, so we look like we're getting a lot better coverage now. So we're going to work on it a little bit more. Again, I'm not really starting to blend my color yet. I really want to get, I want to get coverage before I start that. Because this color is actually a very easy color to blend. It's not super difficult. 